We are live from LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitch, X, Instagram. Oh, Instagram makes my life so hard. Let me click that go live button now because we are live. But we are on Revening's Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday, Revenue Party people. We've got hot topics, hot prizes, and hot guests. So let me get right into it. Hello, Mark. Hello, everyone who's here. I saw Matt and I think I saw Dart there. What's up? I guess what? Girl doesn't. I don't know what you're talking about, Mark Mac. Tell me. Is it me or does Jesse like clothes? I do love some clothes, Mark Mac. Thank you. So if you would love to contribute to yours truly, I always promise to share my tip jar. I'm not going to show it again, so feel free to pause it. But as many of you know, I am an affiliate of StreamYard. That is the tool that we are streaming from tonight. I also coach on how to go live, and I also provide a done-for-you live service. So check it out, everybody. It is the best tool. It allows me to be creative. It allows me to cast to multiple channels. So if you would like help with it, I would love to help you. You can scan that QR code and sign up with StreamYard start going live today. And big thanks to both of our sponsors, High Level and Cherry Assistant. This show would not be possible without you. Check out Cherry Assistant. Do you need a VA? Do you find that you're busy and you're like, ah, I don't, I can't keep up with it. Like that was me before Sabrina with Cherry Assistant. Sabrina started and everything changed. I was able to start scaling. I used to just spend all my time preparing for this show and having sponsors, but now I'm getting inbound leads for live streaming, for my LinkedIn services, all thanks to Cherry Assistant. Cherry Assistant is ran by DJ Kim. He has been out of the, you know, being an employee. He's gone out on his own like a little over a year ago, already had two companies acquired, y'all. DJ Kim knows what's up. He's very smart, went to Vanderbilt. Now he has Cherry Assistant. So if you need to be lined up with the right VA, he is the person you want to talk to. So check them out. And High Level, you know, it's my everything tool. I do everything on High Level. I get my clients on High Level. I am a High Level affiliate, but my favorite thing is to help you become an affiliate. So I was able to make $4,000 extra dollars a month just in affiliate marketing with High Level. I would love to show you how you get a 40% cut recurring on everything you sell. So let's check it out together. And actually, speaking of High Level, they're doing a five-day AI challenge and basically showing you how to get your first customer in five days. It is incredible. Scan that QR code. Go check out their AI challenge. 
And every Wednesday, I'm sending out the newsletter telling you about the show, what to expect, and also what happened the prior week. So if you'd like to get a recap, head on over to Reveting.com. You'll get a pop-up asking you to come join the newsletter. And there is still some space for logos up here. We've had six up here before. I can't believe it. Um, but yeah, you know, I think one more logo would probably fit perfectly. But if you'd like to get in front of the Wednesday audience, I would love to help you get in front of the Wednesday audience. So just check out Reveting.com slash sponsorships if you would like to check that out. And coaching, you know, I'm not going to get into it. I already told you about StreamYard. I'm coaching on a high level too if you want to learn. But the big thing is the women's retreat. I took a big risk and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go put a down payment on a mansion and a branding photographer and an in-home chef and a sound bath person and massages and hope that people come. And I did it. And so far, people are coming. And so I've thankfully recovered my costs at this point. But there are still a few slots left. I'm going to give up my private room. So there's one private room left, but the rest of them are shared rooms. We're calling it our shared sisterhood. And this retreat is a retreat to help you enrich your personal branding. Hence, the renowned photographer will be getting LinkedIn headshots. And then we're also going to be tapping into our feminine energy with lots of relaxation and even more. So check out that page. And we're going to be getting right into it. So let me just pull up these prizes because I know what you're all really interested in, right? Prize one, high level. Would you like to enter to win a swag pack with high level? Drop During this episode, tag high level to enter to win that swag pack. Get a cup of t-shirts, water bottle, hats, really fun stuff. Do you want 10 hours with a free virtual assistant? Check it out. Try it out. We had someone who... Um, Cherry Assistant in that 10 hours actually set up their whole smart lead campaign. So like there's a lot of different things they can do. DJ is brilliant and he's behind it all. So 10 free hours is awesome. Just tag Cherry Assistant in the comments to enter to win. Prize three, you get an AI blog, marketer approved, takes all your keywords. Check it out. Open draft. This was also created by DJ Kim, actually. So this is like, I don't know, he probably has like 10 SaaS out there. I can't even keep track. But this one, like when they put it in product hunt, it went right up there. So check it out. You'll get you'll get 10 free blogs with that prize. Or this is the popular one, a wireless headset from Headset Advisor. Who wants the wireless headset? Tell me why. If I had a wireless hashtag headset, I would. And that's how you're going to enter to win that wireless headset. Thank you, Headset Advisor. And most of you have lavender. So I haven't been able to give this one away for a while because you have to not already have lavender to win. So if you don't have lavender, put I don't have lavender in the comments to enter to win a year free of lavender. And that's going to help you with your email. It's an AI and it it help, it makes sure that you're concise. It helps you with your tone. It gives you a score. I have it. I check. I use it actually for more than just email. I use it for social, social posts too. It's very great. It'll tell you, like, it'll give you suggestions. Just check it out. I promise you, you're going to love it. And I didn't even mention, you can enter to win a month free in my coaching program. It's a group coaching program. We meet four days a week. Come when you can. But count me in if you want a month free. And hashtag revenue is going to get you one month free of blueprint intent from Jordan Crawford, who is here. And I'll let him explain it toward the end of the show. But you're going to want this one month free blueprint intent because First of all, go check out the Blueprint website. They are doing some incredible things and they're helping and they're being data driven about it. But not only that, this is why I like what Jordan is doing. Audience, starting with audience. You have to know your audience, folks. So this is going to be a really important show today because we're going to be getting into that. Um, you can see our topics. You saw them already on the show. So I'm not even going to keep this up there audience. Yes. Uh, but with that, I want to tell you that next week we're going to have a big episode. I'm bringing on two other high level affiliates and we're going to be giving you ideas about how you can become an affiliate. But also, we're not going to be talking just about high level. Like, So we've got we've got Johan and he's got a real estate app that integrates with high level. So he's a SaaS founder himself out of Australia doing some really incredible things. And then we have Pamela who got her husband to retire and they moved to Mexico all by being a high level affiliate. So she's going to be sharing some juice with us. You will not want to miss. 
But that's not why we're all here. I know you all came to hear from Jordan and Sujin. So without further ado, let me welcome them to the show. Welcome to the show, Sujin and Jordan. What up? Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for being here. So I'm going to put the two minute clock up. And when I do, Jordan, could you please tell the audience your full life story from birth to what led you to now? All right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who's interested in this, but uh, uh, but I'm actually going to fast forward to when I started in tech. Um, so I was 19. I played The Sims and I played for like eight hours straight. And I realized my Sim character had a partner, uh, had a had a job, had a house. I didn't have any of those things. So I applied for any job I could, 234 jobs that any of those bullet points I could do. And that's how I got in tech. I worked at Palm for seven years. I traveled around the world, did a lot of customer support stuff. I uh, was exceptional at getting uh, either fired from every company that I've ever worked at uh, or the company went bust. Um, and so from there, I did a bunch of jobs, um, uh, basically doing customer support, customer success for folks, which is why I'm so good at growth. And in 2016, I started at Zinc.com, helped them grow from one to 100 million in GMV in two years as their first growth hire. And in the last three years or so, I've been doing data-driven uh, scoring of your whole TAM. So uh, being able to identify things at scale, who's in your ICP with AI, going and finding contacts based on uh, the way people talk about themselves in their LinkedIn profile, scraping websites, structuring that data to give you the type of intent signals that you need uh, to be able to determine, is this company in your ICP? How good of a fit are they? And if you have great and amazing data that are about the bespoke criteria that makes someone a good fit for you, it means you also have fantastic messaging to those people because you've already done all of the research and great outbound is just describing what you already know about the company or the person that you're reaching out to as it relates to the problem you solve, not the shirt that you wear. And I'll return these next five seconds. Oh, well, thank you so much for that. And Jordan, you mentioned two acronyms that I know you use every day, so you don't think much about it. The TAM, for anyone who doesn't know, is Total Addressable Market. And ICP, I think you all should know that, but it's Ideal Customer Profile. And we're going to be getting into that here in just a moment. But before we do, Sujin, you have an incredible background. You've done a lot. And not only with Mailshake, you're also a managing partner at a venture firm. There is a lot going on and we have a lot to learn from you. Could you tell us like what brought you to now? So wh where are you wh like birth to now? We want to know uh, the full life story. All right. I'll uh, I'll do my best to, to wrap it up in two minutes. So uh when I was, I'll, I'll give you like the, when I was a kid, I had like a life uh, changing event. When I was like seven, I had like a cyst in my throat, I had like major surgery and whatnot, um, and I almost died. And ever since then, I've been a adrenaline junkie, uh, a no means I'm gonna solve that problem and just kind of live in life. Um, I, in, when I was uh, 18 or 19, I started a digital marketing uh, agency. It was really just me freelancing. And through those, uh, I'd say 10 years or so companies called single grain. I work with all sorts of startups, uh, e-commerce services, businesses, marketplaces, companies like LinkedIn, Salesforce, and mint and, and so on. And, uh, I kind of fell in love with SaaS. I, uh, in the 2010 to 2015 range, I tried to start a lot of SaaS businesses. Most of them failed. Actually, all of them failed. Um, uh, some of them spun off, but really, I made no dollars off of it. So I used my agency dollars to build something in SaaS. Eventually, I ended up selling the agency. And I was like, I'm going to go work at a SaaS company to understand what the heck I'm doing wrong. Um, and I did that as a VP of marketing at a company called When I Work. And I went from an entrepreneur to an employee. That transition was really boring. You have a lot of free time. During that time, I was building, well, I built a company called Mailshake to scratch my own itch, a problem I had at the company. 
I learned that it was really, really hard to start a SaaS company again, all the failures um, and whatnot. So I started to look for acquiring businesses. So I've acquired about 11, maybe actually 13 SaaS companies now, and I currently operate um, four. So some of them have been sold. Wow, that's incredible. And I love that you started with that like life changing event because it it does sometimes take a life changing event like that to like really put the fire on the, under us to make us go. And I think it's hilarious that you said you were bored as an employee. <laughs> oh, so, um, it's so boring. If you go from like doing every role possible at a company to just doing the one role, <laughs> you'll understand like, oh, I don't have to like take out the trash or I don't have to do the payroll or like, I don't have this stress, that, that, whatever. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't so imagine true. going back. That, that's You're really like, funny. someone else is going to close this deal. <laughs> this yeah. is amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, so hilarious. Okay. So the first topic we're getting right into it. What's up, Erica? What's up y'all? Tell us what you think. Like we want to know you all are listening. I see 40 of you on LinkedIn. Tell us what you think. This is about you. Keep us honest. But we're going to get into our first topic. And it's five marketing hacks to boost sales efficiency. So Sujin, can you kick us off on this topic? Let's do it. So I've got five things. Hopefully some of you guys are familiar with, with these things. And some of these things are not just like snap your fingers. You can do it right now. They're maybe require some, fun, some funds working with some other folks uh, at your company or, or uh, other cross collaboration. So I'll jump in. Number one, it's the easiest win you've got, it, whether you're in sales, marketing, whatever, right? So if you're in marketing, go look at your signup flow for your SaaS company, for your service. Uh, like how do you sign up for your newsletter? How do you sign up for your product? And look at removing steps or even single form fields. Uh, the biggest test, we, we're constantly testing and we have four different companies. So we get to test lots of different things all at one time and, and like really learn lessons faster. Um, the biggest, easiest thing I just found is if you do a passwordless login, meaning like you just require an email address to sign up and no other form fields, you get the most conversions, obviously, like naturally you get less questions, better, better conversion rate. So go look at your flow. If you're in sales, what, you know, if you want a demo, you want a meeting book, how can you reduce this friction there? Like, can you remove steps? You know, we all know like using something like Calendly or whatever could, could help, but like where are people getting stuck? Actually look at the analytics and say, oh, like I might be asking a required field here. Do I need that? You know, what have you. So guaranteed there's at least one form field that you do not need. Everybody has it. Um, mm. Number two, there's uh, two cool companies to find contact data from website visitors that I use that work well, uh, rb2b.com and warmly.ai. Um, essentially what these tools do is find contact data from your website. So you put the cookie on their site, uh, a JavaScript code on their site, um, it will identify a company that visits, but more specifically people. So a specific person, Warmly is really good if you're in B2B, uh, RB2B, I found to be better and it's kind of cheaper, but really it works everywhere. They just do a much better job. I have no affiliation to any of this stuff, by the way, just sharing what I learned. Uh, really, really good to find actual email addresses or people. So I'll get, I'll find them. We'll get their LinkedIn. We'll get their email. And then what we do is we automatically, we set up a, this one is my company. We set up a mail shake campaign or really any other sales automation tool you use to send an email. Say, hey, I saw you. I saw you stop by. Is there? Do uh, you want to chat? Is there, do you have any questions? Something like that. And I actually call them. So I'll actually go find the call, uh, contact information. And the trick here is you got to do it quickly, right? Within the first five minutes is is key because you get that shock factor. They're not expecting this. This mm -hmm. is somewhat newer. Uh, growth hack or tactic. So it works really, really well right now. If you do this in six months or a year from now, it'll probably be more, less effective. Um, this is just, just, you get that shock factor so people respond better. Number three, easy. In, and we'll get into more of this in a, uh, later in the, in the show. Uh, invite your sales leader or your head of sales um, 
to your marketing meetings, or I guess, or if you're in sales, invite yourself and ask to join the marketing meetings. Usually, marketing meetings are like the team meetings are once a week, you know, once a, every other week. There's some metrics, there's things that they're doing. The whole point here is um, salespeople, when you talk to the customer, you get feedback. Guarantee you, your marketing folks do not know as much as you know about that customer. Uh, one, maybe you can create content for that specific ICP you're doing now. Maybe there's some marketing stuff that you can learn and use today for your call, right? Maybe they discuss product features, what have you. There's not one thing that happens. It's the magic that happens as you kind of start to collaborate on sales and marketing. Um, and, and there's just all these things, especially with remote working, that just get missed. And this kind of forces that engagement. Number four and five, a little harder, create a, whatever you have, a service product, whatever, a software company platform, create something for free. Mm -hmm. um, a free product, if you're in SaaS, would be great. Like that could be a small little tool. You know, back in the day, uh, HubSpot, you know, did this website grader. That was, I think, 2008 or nine. That same strategy still works. Now, you got to come up with your own thing. What are, what does your ICP use that works with your software or like maybe before that you buy if you're a service or even if you're software you can create a free service offering right the great thing about a service offering it costs no money to do you can kind of hack it with yourself doing it um, so for example at mailshake we will do a free deliverability audit that's a big pain point right now we can do that we'll do like various things all around email Right, we'll look at your campaigns, blah blah blah. It's all free, so we just get people on the hook. Oh yeah, by the way, if you want to do it right, you probably should sign up for Mailshake. So it's just a great way to get leads, but you do have to give that that thing away. Um, and then number five is to buy a company on Acquire.com. So Acquire.com is like there's lots of various software companies, or just all types of companies for sale. Um, if you see something that fits your ICP. Generally, there, there's a lot more smaller companies. Again, this ain't free, but it is relatively cheap compared to what it costs to run advertising. Um, and you take that whatever product or feature and you give it away for free. So it kind of goes back to the, uh, you know, create something back to number four. But effectively, uh, we've done this a bunch of times. Now, I bought something for like 30000 50000 We're talking real money here, but it... If you, it goes to really quickly create or have something free that you can offer. Um, and again, I like acquire.com just because they, they've got lots of companies on there and lots of small, you can even buy something for like ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. And again, make that free on your website. Has to hit what your ICP has, but these days there's a lot of companies for sale on that, on that, on that site. That's brilliant. I love all of that feedback. So form fills, Fewer fields in your form fill, fewer steps. Brilliant. Yes. Couldn't agree more. Website visitors. I'll say there's some uh, lead magic crew here. So like I know you mentioned a um, warmly and R2B2, so our B2B. Um, wanted to mention lead magic too. Lead magic is doing some really great things as well as BDEX. If you're looking for consumer data, BDEX is a really great one. I'm a fractional CMO there too. Um, but website visitors, love that. You have to do it fast. Such a great point. What are you saying, Matt? You say, I believe that most salespeople make the mistake of taking prospects through the sales cycle when they are simply not ready. We all struggle, but the worst thing is to do is, to do is inflate the pipeline for optics purposes. Yeah. Great point, Matt. Um, yeah, you could say that again. Give your stuff out for free. I love that. Point four, revenue.com slash LinkedIn. I just did that because of that. I, I did a five-day LinkedIn challenge. So I'm like, why not just take those recordings and just... Get them out for free. And so like even in service, there's a way to do it. Give away a free course. Everyone can give away a free course. Teach something. Invite sales leaders to your marketing meeting. Thank you for saying that. Because as a, a marketing, like I, I was a, a CMO and that I'm still a fractional CMO. But in my career of marketing, I always would run into misalignment in sales where I would like beg to be on sales calls <clears throat> to hear what those sounded like. And I would be rejected. I wouldn't be allowed. You know, they didn't want that marketer listening in. And so I think it is really important, you know, one, to tune into sales calls. I know that's not what you said, 
but to make sure that your teams and that are aligning and that the leaders are understanding. I couldn't have said that better. Thank you for mentioning that. And I kept mentioning DJ Kim at the beginning of this episode. So he just got a business acquired on um, acquire.com. So it made me think of him. He's the one, he's the owner of Cherry Assistant and Open Draft that we're giving away. And just last week, boom, he had a company acquired on Open Draft and he was just, he was working for Rev Genius like not too long ago. Like he was a full time employee not too long ago. So, like, this stuff is real. Like, what was out of all of those things, Jordan? I'm curious, out of those five, what would you say would be the most important? I think you're on mute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's generally the problem in my life. <laughs> I'm on mute. I'm not, I'm not loud enough. That's the problem I have. Um, uh, ICP definition, um, Sujin really hit the nail on the head and all of the things that he was talking about, offer creation, et cetera, um, that only works if you get your ICP really right. ICP, ideal customer profile. And um, and people really think of this in sort of a poor man's way, which is I target VPs of marketing at uh, sales companies that are between 50 and 1,000 employees, right? That's not really good ICP definition. And let me give you an example of this so you can understand about why this matters. It seems like a useless exercise, but everything resonates when you get it right. I had a customer come to me and they said, Jordan, we solve retail theft. And that's like, and they were a camera company. And I said, okay, great. You're competing with the locksmith. You're competing with the alarm system. You're competing with the person that sells the doors. You're competing with so many different pieces of software. And you know, a camera system is actually not that amazing for retail theft because all it will do is we'll show you when the $300 has left the door. So I said, let's go talk to your customers. Now, what are your customers actually saying? Why did they hire you? And now one of their customers said, well, Jordan, we get OSHA fines um, when people at our 15 different locations don't wear their helmets and your software can detect that and alert me. And I'm like, that is amazing because we started with a customer problem and that customer problem, the locksmith can't solve that problem. The security guard can't solve that problem. The only so tool that can solve that problem are security cameras in all of your locations with AI notifications. They can tell you within five minutes when someone takes off their helmet and protects everyone. And you can see how if you start with a customer and go backwards to define your ICP, they have spent their entire lives figuring out how to buy your product and why to buy your product. And those conversations will make sure that if you're doing go to market test, you're throwing spaghetti at a wall, not into the universe. And so if you don't anchor on your ideal customer profile and start with the customer conversations and go backwards, you'll have no idea where to start. Now, let's actually talk you through some specific examples here. So um, this is things like, what does their traffic look like, right? Let's talk about for an ads company, right? You want to know they have high traffic. So you can get data from similar web. You can grab most of this data through clay.com. Um, you want to know if they're, you want to know kind of what they sell. So you can go straight to the website and ask Claude on the whole text of the website. Is this a company that's selling items over X, Y, or Z? So you know that they're going to be profitable with ads. You can look at ratios of people. So for example, if there's a hundred people and five of them have paid ads in their titles, you know that it's a really important channel for people. Um, you can even look at my data, Blueprint Intent, which you can get a free month for free. We collate all the jobs in the universe and allow you to sort by density of keyword. So if people are actually in job descriptions are talking about Facebook, Meta, Google, run paid ads, you can sort by the density of these keywords, which gives you some understanding of both timing and need, right? You know who to contact, you know when to contact them. And because of the job description, you actually know what to say to them. This is what good ICP and persona definition looks like. Now, uh, am I done? I'm, I, I have, <laughs> okay. I just had one, one last example here to talk about, which is a good growth play is taking the complexity of how you're, uh, prospects buy and automating that. So a perfectly good example of this that worked exceptionally well for me is I looked at who installed segment, the date they installed segment, how much money they had raised. So I knew they were part of the segments free startup program. And then I delayed that data by 18 months. And I knew that they were about to have a $60,000 segment bill. And I sent them a message like, you're about to come up on a gigantic bill. Would you like to use me? I'm a segment competitor. We're the exact same, but we're not going to charge you. So this is kind of what ICP definition looks like. 
I love that. And that transitioned us beautifully into our second topic of ideal customer profiles and who fits your business mold. So Jordan, when you kick us off on this topic, like for people watching and we've got, I'm seeing people in the comments, we've got a lot of salespeople in here tonight. What would be, and I see definitely some marketers too. I see you, I see you. Um, but what would, what would be your like number one suggestion to them? Like if they're starting at a new company and, and it's a startup and they're trying to find product market fit, where do they start? What do they look at like look look at to see who fits your business model? Yeah, go take the the longest tenured customer success person out for a nice dinner because they've had tons of conversations with your customers and all of the knowledge about what customers actually care out are going to be in their head. Now you do want to listen to gong calls, etc. But the one thing that companies will do all the time to sales reps is they say, we sell to marketing agencies between 100 and 5,000 people. Go sell our stuff. And that leads you to just lead with speeds and feeds. Here's what we do. And the what messaging looks like from reps uh, that have that information are they show up and they throw up. So they're like, hey, Jordan, I see that you have a shirt. I wear shirts too. Isn't that amazing? Congratulations on wearing shirts. My company does. And they just like throw up. But if you don't actually know what your customers care about, and it's not the speeds and feeds, you don't know their problem. You can't communicate about their problem. And when you communicate about your problem, which is when you understand your customer, you can drastically change the outcome of your messaging because people understand that you are serious, that you actually have something serious to say, that you're not trying to make a transaction on a cold email, that you're trying to educate them about the market. And all you have to do for great ICP uh, definition and messaging is take what your customers already know to your brand new customers. You take all of their lifetime of experience and you take what they know about the market to new customers. And if you do that exceptionally well, suddenly everything becomes easier because all you're doing is arbitraging an expert's knowledge to communicate that to another expert. That's brilliantly put, Jordan. Thank you for that. Like Sujin, you know, in wrapping up this ICP conversation, you were a marketer, you had to do all of this stuff. Like, what's your suggestion to everyone out there who's trying to find their ICP? You know, I think it starts with um, looking at who has the most to gain from whatever, you know, whatever you're, you're selling or, or your product. And the other part of this is who is underserved, right? So, uh, you know, it might be like you might be selling to like let's say sales teams, but the underserved market, the one that no one's talking about, is like a founder salesperson or like I'm just that's that's a bad example, but but effectively look for areas where there's no one, there's not as much people, there's not as many companies targeting um, ICP. But really, from my experience, there hasn't been a great. I haven't found a great shortcut to finding your ICP. It really is going through and figuring out, trying different messaging, trying kind of different pain points until you find the right one. And I guarantee you, when you find the right one, you will not miss it. The reason is it will be an easier sale. It will be like, I'm doing this, wait, I'm gonna buy, ready, let's go. And and then you get more of them and you'll get more of them, you get more of them, but it is a, it's a grueling process to find your ICP. I'm so glad you said that. And like, I don't know, I might tear up a little bit, but like um, just yesterday that happened to me. I've been like the last month I've been growing on TikTok and someone uh, there are about 30,000 views on one TikTok video. I mentioned an app that I, I, I use, I have, it's my app and I use it for my clients, but he reached out to me. He hunted me down. I didn't have my contact information and he was going to get access to my app and that was it. So like, it was, a, it was an amazing feeling because I couldn't sell to him fast enough. There was nothing I needed to do. He found my TikTok video and he came to me. And so, yeah, I think you just explained that really well. And it was a really timely for me. But um, we have two more hot topics, bridging the gap, fixing sales and marketing alignment, which you already brought up the leaders attending each other's meetings. Um, so I'm excited to hear more about what you guys think and ideas for alignment and then crafting unique messaging and what sets you apart. But we're gonna be getting into all of these videos or all of these topics right after these messages. Hey, check this email 
was waiting to write the script. Oh my god, I forgot to schedule all my content last week. I know the chaos of running a one person business can feel too much sometimes. Carrying an assistant has become my secret weapon to success. Having an actual niche assistant has been so game changing. But since bringing on one of their virtual assistants, they have been handling all my nitty gritty tasks from DMing people on my socials to following up with leads, even doing the cold outreach for me. Plus, the help with all the tedious admin tasks like managing emails, scheduling appointments, reminding me of appointments. Just imagine the time that you're going to have when you have an actual niche virtual assistant helping you with all these things. So with your assistant, you're never going to have to worry about the little things again. You don't want to call with them. That way they can actually gauge your business needs and they're going to help you fill the gaps. So you go to cherrysystem.com, you can get on a call with one of them and they're going to help you find your place. Now you can actually finally free up some time to focus on building your empire. Do you ever feel like you're just doing everything last minute? That was my story before I started working with Cherry Assistant. Hi, I'm Jesse Lezak, founder and CEO of Reveting and host of Whiskey Wednesday. Whiskey Wednesday is a live stream and broadcast that goes live across channels every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. We bring on executives in the SaaS industry, coaches. It's quite the production and it takes a lot of effort and planning. So it would be really stressful um, before working with Cherry Assistant. I did have help, but even still, everything was being done last minute. But since working with Cherry Assistant, I've been able to get shows posted well into the advance and not only that getting the promotional materials done and so it's been really great having the opportunity to work with cherry assistant thank you so much to dj kim and the cherry assistant team for all that you've done to help beforehand and really honor you and think about what would you want to know about high level. Hi, I'm Jesse Lezak, founder and CEO of Reveting and host of Wednesday. High level has an awesome affiliate program and I've loved being a part of it. Not only are they sponsors of Wednesday, but I'm also an affiliate, meaning anytime I get someone to sign up for their product, I get a 40% cut and that's a 40% cut on recurring revenue. I would love to give you all the information that I wish I would have had when I was getting started to become an affiliate with High Level, but I'd love to show you the path. Send me a message on whatever platform you're seeing this on, and I'd love to be able to help you become a High Level affiliate as well. I was able to bring in $4,000 in one month as a sponsored affiliate. Let me tell you how. I stopped focusing on product and features and started focusing on value. I was throwing master classes and events and you know now I'm doing a retreat. Events have really been something I have focused in on. I created a funnel and my funnel is what helps get people to show up not just to my event but to other people's events as well. Just imagine this. You registered for a master class, it's free, it's in one month and you are totally excited to go. Fast forward 30 days and you already forgot that that masterclass is happening. This is where your funnel comes in. You have to constantly be reminding people once they register for your event and you need that funnel to be in line with the event date so that you can plan ahead and have text messages, emails, and communication going out to your attendees so they know what to bring, when to bring it, and what they need to do to show up and be successful at your event. That is the value I've gotten out of high level for using their robust funnels. So what are you waiting for? Head over to Reveting.com, reach out to me. 
an email is jesse at reveting.com or you can go into LinkedIn, send me a DM and let's get your event popping. <laughs>
Are the sales reps not following up in time? Are the lead qualities not good? And to own that number and that conversation together because you can't you can't disassociate them. If the marketer sends bad uh, leads into the funnel and the sales reps aren't closing, right? That's a shared problem. The marketer has some responsibility. The sales rep has some responsibility. There's good ICP fits coming into the funnel and sales isn't closing them. That's a different conversation. Um, and and really, it's the ability to be honest about that conversation. I'm curious, like Sujin, how did you think about solving this? Um, in the CMO org, you were like, did, do you have to undo these things or did you kind of come in before the rot took place? It's always undo. Uh, the, the framework gets put in too early and everyone, you know, everyone really prioritizes like a metric or a, a, a thing as a sign of uh, I've done something, I've done my job. And, and really, if you're in marketing, your job is to increase new revenue and total revenue if you're in sales it's the same number right so to me it's revenue through the door and um yeah undoing it is one big thing um sqls mqls pqls like it's really just about like how do we increase monetization through all the all of our efforts and, and make it a team sport i think a lot of this requires the ceo or maybe like uh, like really leadership to align on like, Hey, we're going to go focus on all things revenue and let's, you know, let's prioritize the highest impacts. But yes, uh, the biggest complaint, and you've seen it all the time, Jordan, and then we're listening, watching the marketing, marketing person's like the salesperson didn't do their job. They didn't convert it. They didn't close it. And the salesperson's like, that was a bad lead. They're giving me bad marketing's giving me bad leads. And it's like, well, if we knew, if marketing, not we, if marketing understands the feedback loop that this is not a good lead, trust me, they want revenue. Let's get them the feedback loop quick and, and know, let them know that it's not a good lead. Uh, this category sucks. Here's the pain points um, or here's some additional targeting. It could make, you know, it'll, it'll, you won't be going after that wrong audience or wrong segment. I love how the commenter was like, the only place I didn't see this problem was at Coca-Cola. I'm like, everyone loves sugar water, <laughs> like bubbly <laughs> sugar water. You'll never have any argument about your ICP. It's if you're breathing, you love bubbly sugar water. So like easiest place to align sales and marketing. <laughs> yeah, that's a great point, Cynthia. That's that's wild. And I mean, it makes sense that they wouldn't have any alignment problems. But yeah, I I haven't been anywhere. I don't think that didn't have a little bit of alignment issue. And it, it does come down, like you said, Sujin, is communication. Communication is key. And I truly believe that marketers need to take more interest in sales. I think the best marketers can sell. And I think the best sellers can market. And so I really think like even beyond leadership, we could be putting, you know, the entry people even together to shadow each other and to learn like, if you don't have gong, you should still be able to hear a sales call. So, you know, it's being said, like, I, I don't know, but I digress. Audience, <laughs> I want to hear you. from you on this. You're all being very quiet tonight. Um, we we're like 80 of you here at one point. No one's saying anything. Enter to win some prizes. Let us know what you think. Um, but before we transition topics, is there anything else either of you would want to say on alignment? The potato was probably the perfect end to that statement there. It's like, Dean, <laughs> Dean is like, pass that damn potato. No, don't do that. Like <laughs> two people need to hold the potato at the same time. If you're going to make this to work, it needs to be a shared potato. <laughs> that's the, that's not a line. Set, right? <laughs> there needs to be an emoji for a shared potato. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. hands reaching out. to yeah, the shared yeah. potato. If it's like hot, you both have to get burned. <laughs> that's the deal. Ah, with yeah. You don't want a hot potato. Yeah. You can't throw it back and forth. <laughs> That's hilarious, Jordan. Damn. I know Dean, so I know his potato is represent representation of his authenticity. There's a good story <laughs> behind it. Dean, tell it better than I do in the comments. I want to hear from you. Um, but we still have hot topics. We've got prizes to give away with really great odds. There's like one entry on most of these, and I can't run it with one entry. So enter to win some prizes. Who wants a free wireless headset? Um, but yeah, now let's get into our fourth topic while you all are still entering to win prizes in terms of crafting unique messages and what sets you apart. So 
you were talking about ICP. Well, we were all talking about ICP earlier, Jordan. And once you narrow down that ICP, how do you figure out your messaging that sets you apart? Yeah, uh, sure. This is a really interesting, and you have a weird, unique opportunity with AI here. People are using AI totally wrong. They're going into ChatGPT and say, write a message to the VP of marketing. Uh, and that's a terrible idea. Um, <clears throat> the interesting thing about what sets you apart is it's the same inversion thinking. It's going from the customer and figure out why they chose you and taking that message to market. So it's the inversion that you need to think about. Now, there are ways to hack this, and you can hack this by thinking about if you had unlimited amounts of time to research your prospects, what would you find on them and their companies online that would make them an A-plus fit for your product? Now, I'm going to tell you about a way to hack this that I've done just recently and that you can do now, and the AI models are just there. And it's about using this framework called Creative Constraint with Context. So let's talk about each of these. And this is how to use the AI model to write messages at scale. And so the AI models are incredibly creative, but they're almost too creative. So you need to give them context. Now, the context is where does the problem exist? Now, let's talk about Mailshake, for example. Sujin talked about um, uh, a deliverability audit. So you can find all that in their DNS records. You can figure out which tools they're using today. You can use my graphics API to figure out do they use outreach or sales loft? That's the context. Um, now, constraint. Why does that matter? What do you want the large language model to do? Well, you want to talk about the problems they have. So take all of this information and only identify the problems. And then you can have it be super creative. You can say, given all of this information, tell me the top three email delivery problems that they're probably going to have. Now, let me give you an actual real example of this. I scraped all of the Facebook ad profiles for companies that we were targeting. I did a lookalike audience with Ocean.io. Then what I did is I took screenshots of non-video ads. I used GPT-4 Vision to describe those ads. And then I used Claude's Opus model, but the Haiku model also is very good. They are better than ChatGPT. And I was able to send a message that literally no sales rep would ever send because I asked it to pretend to be an ad expert. So at scale, I said something like, I took a look at one of your recent ads and had some suggestions. Image context. The product is well lit, but lacks context. Show the backpack in an aspirational travel setting. This is actually commenting on an ad. It's giving you ideas. Static visual. The image feels static. Include elements that imply movement or adventure, like an action shot. Ad copy. The discount focus copy writes commoditizing the brand. Lead with unique value prop, then mention the discount. And the offer here, which Susan talked about earlier, want me to look over your whole ad account on us. Now, that's an example of AI writing all of the messaging because I gave it context and I told it to be ultra creative as the world's best Facebook ads marketer. And you can do this if you think about the inversion. If you had unlimited amounts of time to research your prospects, what would you look for and what would you say? And then you can use a tool like Clay.com to automate that whole thing. Mm, yes, Clay.com. I was going to sign up for that this week. Um, I hear a lot about it, but don't wait. <laughs> but, but before I digress, or before I before I go into that anymore, I want to hear Sujin your take on this topic in terms of crafting your unique message and what sets you apart. So how do you? You've done this several times. You've been, you know, you've built a number of businesses. You were a marketing leader. <clears throat> so what's your trick in making sure that your message is unique? Do the opposite of everyone else. Like that's the message, the opposite of whatever people are talking, like what's trending right now at that time. Um, that's a simple one. Um, but really it's, it's, it's kind of leading on to what, what Jordan mentioned, uh, or leaning at adding to that. It's it, most of most people don't put enough time and effort. So it, into, into writing messaging, Biggest thing I've learned is, and this is came from lots of like back in the day content marketing, uh, like all of these uh, blogs that came out and became uh, major businesses. The, the ones, and then like Facebook amplified them, forgot the name of the company, but they effectively, for every single article they wrote, they forced their writers to write 25 headlines for every single article. 
the reason for that is you're, it's a brainstorming exercise. Eventually, the first couple stuff, five or 10 might be genius. 10 to 15 might be batshit crazy. Number 17 might be the one that wins. But effectively, you're just practicing and practicing. And you just keep thinking about the same thing. And one of those ideas it ends up being good. But you, you can test this all out. But the short version is just zig when people are zagging. I think that's the one that's worked well for us. So if everything is like super expensive and enterprise, go cheap mm -hmm. as hell and easy, right? And that's actually, that's how Mailshake started. It was very, very straightforward. I mean, I want to like dovetail to that, which is that pick markets uh, where you have a lot less competition and your value is much different than what people can do today. So for example, there are all these chatbots like Warmly is a perfectly good example that are service bells, another one that are targeting this like B2B SaaS. Well, they have thousands of options, but then there are these like little known brands that are conquering solar, for example. So they're on all of the solar websites. And that's because you can define your features and your value against Jeffrey Moore talks about this and crossing the chasm. If you can benchmark against a huge gap in the market where the buyers aren't as technical, they don't have as many solutions, you're not trying to compete with the same B2B SaaS crowd. And your differentiation becomes obvious because a B2B SaaS crowd is like, should I build or buy? But a solar company, they will never build a chatbot. They will never build whatever tool you, you're doing. They don't have engineers. And that's the kind of thing that make your messaging really stand out because relative to their options, you are the future. It's like taking Uber into another country when they just started launching in the United States. It's a, such a difference for that other market. And that's your opportunity. Yeah. So I think like niching down, you're kind of talking about niching down or verticalizing, right? And that's right. my my like add on to that sorry we're just like adding on to these things but please uh, it's that's how you can start and enter that's not what you have to be your initial icp to enter a market or build a company to get your first hundred or a thousand customers or your first million dollars in revenue is not where you end up mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be it could be you can go into another niche another niche another niche the reason I love the niche space or the vertical space is a lot less competition. Jordan's example of a solar company is never going to do the thing to build it themselves or whatever. And usually it's stickier because they're never going to want to switch. It's, you know, like they're less tech savvy. So therefore you might be like, but what are other companies that look like this persona? What are lookalikes of that? Right. Um, mm -hmm. Go think about that. I think this day and age where competition is fierce across everything online, you have to niche down to stand out. Yeah. I mean, a perfect example of this is that I was um, one of the best companies in all of those that I advise. Uh, what they did is I taught them how to use AI to invent ideas about what AI could be used for their business. So they started with go to market. They had nothing. And they went after all different markets and they they measured the response. And then they started eliminating markets. This market is better than that market. This market is better than that market. And they niched down, niched down. And they just got 180 leads at their last conference because of some work that I did for them. They were over the moon about it. And it's not because they had some amazing secret sauce that no other technology company they provide. It's because they did the opposite thing first. They picked their market before they built their product. No one does that. And if you can pick your market, everything becomes easier. You can you can have the worst people, the worst product, and you can conquer it if you have an amazing market that is drastically underserved, not by the AI wave, but even by the software wave. Yeah, it's like the chicken or the way or the chicken or the egg thing. Like which comes first? Is it the audience or is it the product or service? You know, audience. like that for me, it was the, the audience. Way. I, I yeah. started a show, so I built an audience. I was going live. I was building a brand while I was an employee, and that allowed me to get sponsors and then later figure out what service I could offer these folks. Um, and so it's a brilliant point. You don't have to start with the product, and too many people do. Oh, I mean, yeah, anything more that either of you would want to add on this topic, like in terms of really making our messaging unique and zigging when others zag, which is brilliant. I love that you mentioned that. Um, what else can we do? Anything else? Well, I have only one kind of more thought here is that 
there it's not often that you live uh or it doesn't come very often where there's technological revolutions there's only been three in my life the internet the cloud slash mobile wave and the ai wave and people are drastically underestimating exactly how much value this is the world's smartest 12 year old and the problem is that people are asking the 12 year old to perform heart surgery without giving it any context without directing it um, and weirdly, this thing can mostly perform copy heart surgery, especially Claude is very good at this, but you really need to think about what would you do by hand? What are the things that you would research? Where does that information exist? Assume you had unlimited amounts of time and then you can deploy, you can basically build the steps to get there and AI can drastically increase everything you're doing, but you can't say to a 12 year old, go and conquer the world. You need to actually define and reduce all the things the steps. And you can use tools like clay.com to do that. Um, but you have an opportunity here if you're on the front of this wave because it will become commoditized and you will miss one of the biggest waves of, of our lifetime if you don't take action and start using the tools today. I don't know what you think, Sujin. I love it. Love it. I think that's that's so true. You, the, the rules and the parameters, you have to get smarter at being a prompt engineer and given given this this uh, the the dumbest smartest person you know <laughs> some boundaries, um, um, and I always just just to be clear like my my favorite way to to um, to leverage AI for copywriting is really I write the copy first, okay, and say give me variations of this say this make you know it's okay here's the some stupidest one make this sexier okay <laughs> I, I write the headline and say make this sexier and and then and, and again like okay now do this without plot right now now make this for professionals right or executives or whatever right so like i'm literally a b testing like on my company website zoomshift.com you can see it now if you look at it we're testing out like i think four or five different headlines for our, like our homepage with that, like make this sexier, make this dumber, make it simpler, make it like what what would a small business owner care about? And those are the those are the questions I ask after I put the my current headline. Yeah. And let me dovetail on that. Another thing that I do here is I put those, you know, those like two wavy quotes that you see in a lot of these in like tools like Mailshake. You can say two to three word summary of the problem, colon. Five, like six word summary of the problem, like comma, six word summary of the solution. So you basically can craft these mini little four snippets and Claude is amazing at really, really, even Haiku, which is like a 10th the price of GBT 3.5, maybe it's a, a fifth the price. Um, it will follow that logic almost to the T if you give it those parameters and you can allow it to be super creative within the context that you've given it and within the sort of the bowling lane that you've provided. That's a brilliant right. way to think about that. You all have shared like some really like memorable like suggestions. So zig when others zag. And also th this is going to stick with me, Jordan, thinking of chat GPT as a 12 year old child that is going to stick with me. And then make it sexier. Literally, I'm not going to forget that. Thank you for that. <laughs> and I will add on to the chat GPT prompt thing is you can ask chat GPT what additional information it needs to make something better. And it'll tell you, yeah, it'll say, example. yeah, I, I use that a lot. So just another suggestion. What about all of you, Matt, what are your favorite chat GPT prompts? Virginia, what are you using? Matt says, understanding what outcomes your prospects are or should be looking for is something not enough people think about. He is absolutely right, but we've got prizes to give away and the guru of the week. Ooh, ooh. Okay, so I'm going to pull myself out here. And folks, we've got um, one entry on high level, one entry on cherry assistant. No one has lavender and we have one entry on I mean, everyone has lavender because uh, I know it backwards. <laughs> um, everyone has lavender. So no one entered to win. And there's one entry on hashtag revenue which could you tell everyone jordan if they win about their prize with you oh sure yeah blueprint intent will allow you to we've got about 25 million jobs in the database about 5 million in the last 90 days and what you can do is you can type in any keyword any title and you can sort an entire market's worth of data 
by density of pain based on the keywords in the job descriptions. Mm. So if people are looking for paid ads, Facebook, et cetera, you can see who are the people that have the most number of jobs that have the highest density of the keywords that exist inside of those job descriptions. It's usually $500 a month. You'll get a free month. Uh, uh, here and you can export up to 4,000 jobs at a time and the associated companies. This is a great source of intent. So Sujin could figure out who's thinking about mail deliverability, who's sending a lot of outbound emails, who has the biggest cold calling teams, how many cold calls they expect to make a day, who's investing in training materials. You can find all this out by sorting the market by density of problems that exist inside of their job descriptions. And you'll get a whole free month if you uh, if you win here. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much. So folks, you got a couple more seconds to enter to win because I'm going to pull myself out here and I'm going to do the guru of the week. Ooh -ooh. Drum roll. So who is the guru of the week, Jordan and Sujin? I'm going to pull myself out. Uh, well, for you me, it's, go first. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's Nate Nasrallah. Uh, uh, this is the best person at mid funnel that I have ever met a really heart centered founder that is building a product called fluent that will help you win in the mid funnel. And Nate post amazing gems about how to sell with your buyers, not to them, how to enable your champions. He's got about 60,000 followers, so he's not unknown. Uh, but let me tell you, the guy should be known more because he is just absolutely incredible. I've never had anyone that is as grateful as Nate. Anytime I ask him for anything, Nate is there for me. So uh, go follow Nate. Love it. Uh, mine is Heathen Shaw is a great newsletter for like the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Um, just, I just, I've been following the breadcrumbs of what he, what he posts on there and just like subscribing to all these articles Effectively, that Morning Brew and Founder Weekly are the only things I read these days or something. That, and then, like, follow the breadcrumbs of all the kind of content I enjoy. Um, great, great content if you're in SaaS and business, entrepreneurial. It's still, it's very relevant for sales and marketing because there's just a lot of gems you can find. Hidden Shaw is amazing. I, I double that recommendation. I've had tea with that gentleman a couple of times, and he is also so generous. Boy, what a nice guy. Yeah. So how do I spell his name so I can find him? H-I-T-E-N-S-H-A-H, -H, I believe. Sujin, did I do uh, that justice? Yeah. 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 Uh, hey. He also quotes Zig Ziglar in his emails. If you give enough people what you want, you will want for nothing or something along those lines. Can you spell his last name one more time? S-H-A-H. H-I-T-E-N-S-H-A-H. All right, I just dropped it in the comments so all of you can go follow him. And Nate Nazarella is great. He was on the show two years ago. We should bring him back. And if there's anyone you all would like to see on the show, let us know. Drop it in the comments. But it's time to give away some prizes. So I'm going to do this pretty quickly here because I think tonight we're just going to be running the draw on revenue and high level. So we'll go ahead and start with high level. We have two entries. It's either going to be Mark Mack or our favorite Potato Man, Dean. And it's going to go to Mark Mack. Oh, oh Potato. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> Mark Mack, I know you have the, um, I know we have your details, but to make things a little easier to actually, no, I won't have all your details because I'll need your shirt size. So go to reveting.com slash win winner to enter to, to give us your information and we'll connect you with the brands after the show. One more drawing. Let me give it away. Let's see who's it going to be. Hashtag revenue. Four of you. We've got Dean. I see a Josh. I see Aaron and Matt. And the winner of hashtag revenue is Aaron. Aaron congratulations. You are the winner. Oh, you're going to love this one, Aaron. Thank you so much for sharing that. And both of you, before we end the show, could you both just tell listeners if they wanted to reach out to you after the show and connect with you, how could they do so? We'll start with you, Jordan. Uh, I'm linkedin.com uh, slash in slash Jordan Crawford. I think if you go to jordancrawford.com, it'll redirect you there. Uh, and I'm, I post on LinkedIn a lot. I got a YouTube channel that uh, where I post a lot of ridiculous of my workflows that 
um, you can see. And I'm so grateful that you were here to watch. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you. And Sujin, how about you? Where can folks reach you? Yep, I'm most active on LinkedIn as well. Uh, in slash Sujin Patel. Um, we've got a cool newsletter for sales folks, um, just sharing um, great, great content, mostly curated. Uh, and we've got a podcast called Shake Sales. So check those things out. That's awesome. Well, I really couldn't thank both of you enough. I mean, this was an excellent episode in terms of the knowledge that was shared tonight. This is a golden episode. I'm going to have to go back and re-listen to it. You're both doing incredible things. And I'm so grateful that you were able to stay. I guess you're not on East Coast, so you didn't stay up extra late to be with us, but um, maybe a little extra late if you're in Central Time, um, Sujin. But I appreciate you coming on a LinkedIn Late Live. Audience members, thank you so much for being here. And until next time, I'm going to close us out with a video. But thanks again, Jordan and Sujin. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Sujin. Bye-bye.